let's talk about the science of candles. Oh yeah, these are actually way cooler than you realize. Let's break down capillary action, vaporization, and combustion all in the simple form of a candle. My name is Jonathan Allers, and this is Destructive Creativity. We are here for you, for science, and for fun. So if any of those things appeal to you, make sure you click that subscribe button and the little bell icon so that you are notified every time we make new content, which is about once a week. Before we talk about candles, let's take a look at one of the coolest magic tricks that I've seen using candles, where it seems to light itself using smoke. Let's take a look. Did you see how the flame traveled down the smoke and then relit the candle, seemingly by magic? Well, that all comes down to what is actually burning. You see, candles are made up of basically long strings of hydrocarbons, which is a bunch of hydrogen and carbon atoms all strung together. And when you look at a candle, that is the hydrocarbons in a solid form. And then when it warms up, it pools into a liquid. Hydrocarbons in a solid and a liquid state do not burn. We actually need to vaporize those hydrocarbons in order to burn anything at all. So what happens? Well, we light the candle and the wick has already absorbed some of the liquid wax during the manufacturing of the candle. Now the heat of that initial flame vaporizes the wax that is inside of the wick. And that vaporized wax mixes with the oxygen in the air, and we'll get to that later. But for now, the wax has been vaporized outside of the wick, which means the wick itself will start burning, except for capillary action. Capillary action is defined as the movement of molecules in a liquid toward the molecules of a solid. So in this case, the molecules of the liquid wax are literally being attracted to and drawn upwards into the wick because of capillary action. And I'll probably do a whole episode on capillary action later, but for now, you can look it up on your own. But as the wax is being drawn up into the wick, it is also just being vaporized by the flame and the heat. And the same heat that radiates outwards and around is radiating downwards toward the wax, which is melting the solid into the liquid, which is then being drawn up again and completing the process. The candle is actually a very efficient form of combustion. Now to understand why a flame would leap downwards through the smoke and relight the candle, we have to understand what is happening at each temperature of that candle flame. Because there's a couple of different colors, and each color represents a different process. Let's examine the shape and color of this candle flame. Now every candle flame has three distinct colors. There's the main body of the flame, which is yellow. Then there's the kind of the band of uh, yellowish, brownish, orangish, and then the base, which is blue. Now the shape of a candle flame is roughly the shape of a teardrop because hot air rises, and as it combusts those hydrocarbons, it's drawing all of the hot air upwards, and it's drawing in cold air through the bottom and drawing in lots and lots of oxygen to the base of the flame. And that's why we get that blue flame right at the bottom. There's lots and lots of oxygen there to be burned, and that is the hottest point of the flame. Lots of oxygen, lots of heat. And it's at this blue portion of the flame that the hydrocarbons actually get vaporized. The wax actually split into hydrogen and carbon. And the hydrogen mixes with the oxygen and creates a little bit of water vapor. The carbon also begins the burning process and produces carbon dioxide. Now we move upward to the brownish orange zone, for lack of a better term. I'm sure there is a term for that, I just don't know what it is. Anyways, the brownish orange zone continues the process of breaking apart the carbon in the wax molecule. And the carbon breaks down and creates tiny microscopic solid pieces of carbon, which then get warmed up and rise into the yellow zone. Now the yellow part of the flame is the one that gives candles the ability to give lots of light. It's the carbon particles themselves that are beginning to combust as they move upwards through the flame. And when those carbon particles combust, it releases broad spectrum light, which is visible to our eyes. And because yellow is the dominant spectrum that is released, we perceive the candle's light to be yellowish. 
Now there is technically a fourth layer of the candle that doesn't really match any of the characteristics of the other ones. It's called the veil, and that's that kind of bluish bluish color that extends from the bottom blue layer and kind of up the sides. That's because there is more oxygen on the, on the outside of the candle flame than the inside, so then it burns hotter. And that veil is the hottest part of the candle flame, which can reach up to 1400 degrees Celsius, which is very, very hot. All right, now let's go back to that really cool magic trick that we looked at at the beginning, where we can light a candle using its own smoke. So now we know that what's burning isn't the wick or the smoke, it's actually vaporized wax. And when we blow out a candle, it's still hot enough to vaporize that wax for quite some time, but there's no flame to actually burn it. So that wisp of smoke that you see is actually vaporized candle wax. Now when we light that vaporized candle wax, it will burn, the same as a candle, all the way back to its own wick. It's very cool. Now, one other cool thought experiment that kind of proves that NASA is run by a bunch of men is what would a candle look like in the absence of gravity, or in the presence of microgravity in this outer space? So that teardrop-shaped candle flame is due to the fact that there's an up and a down on Earth. Hot air rises away from the center of mass, and then that draws in the oxygen from around it, etc, etc. So what would that look like in outer space? Well, typically it's bad to start a fire on a spaceship. That's pretty much most of the job of NASA engineers, just to make sure that fire doesn't break out. Well, in the late 1990s, they decided, let's start a fire in space. And they did. And this is what a candle flame looks like in the absence of normal Earth gravity. It loses its teardrop shape completely and looks more like a little ball of fire on a stick. It's pretty cool. Anyways, this is Destructive Creativity. We have new stuff coming out every single week, and make sure you subscribe. Till next time, see you later!